Hello everyone, this is Alex from Masters of Ultrasound and today we're going to do a complete review of the Clarius PA face array. So as you can see here, the footprint is the same as conventional face array probes from card machines. Contrary to other devices I already reviewed on the channel, such as the Butterfly IQ Plus or the Viscan Air, Clarius devices aren't designed for the whole body. I mean, you can scan any part, but it is not intended to do so and thus they aren't optimized. Instead, the Canadian company, which is now available in more than 90 countries worldwide, decided to focus on each group of organs which are scanned with the same probe, and they developed six specialty scanners, three linear, one phased array, one microconvex, and one endocavity, plus a multipurpose convex scanner, as you can see on this image from their website. This has some pros, especially if you're a specialist and you always scan the same organ and therefore you don't require full body capabilities or you only use one probe, for example, and cons, especially if you're a generalist such as internal medicine, emergency medicine, family medicine, and so on. In this video, I will focus on the phased array device since it's the one I've been testing in depth. The device has a separate battery that charges with its own dock and they're swappable in case you run out of power in the middle of a scan session. When switched in, the device weighs 370 grams and therefore it is a little bit heavier and bulkier than others I have tested already. It measures 16.6 per 7.8 per 3.8 cm, but it still fits inside a white coat pocket and it's completely handheld. It pairs with the smartphone or iPad via Wi-Fi and sends all the images there, thus getting kinda hot with prolonged scan sessions. It is worth mentioning that these handheld devices aren't intended for long scan sessions, and almost all of them suffer from the same problem, with scan sessions longer than 10 minutes, which is heating, and longer than 15-18 minutes, which is overheating. The maximum recommended scan time is 20 minutes as per their official webpage. The smartphone screen displays a temperature indicator which can help monitor the temperature and get to know when it will stop working. And as usual, after a few minutes switched off, it recovers normal temperature and can go back to scan. I have said it is bulkier and heavier, but alongside the specific Pro, face array in this case, it has a very good image quality, at least from the heart, which is what I tested and what this device is specially designed to. As per their website, this face array device is ideal for cardiac, fast, and abdominal exams, although it can also be used for bladder, lung, ob and superficial. It has B-mode, M-mode, color doppler, and power doppler, and optionally pulse wave doppler. This one had it. Tycom and extended warranty are also additional. It also comes with one hour of personal training, three-year warranty, unlimited cloud storage, and no annual subscriptions, so it's a one-time payment of $4,900. The max depth is 40 cm and the frequency is 1 to 5 MHz. It has two programmable buttons, it is compatible with iOS 11 or later and Android 4.4.2 or later. Battery lasts one hour of scan time approximately, not non-stop, which is similar to what other devices offer. It can be charged in 90 minutes and the boot up in my case was of about 45 seconds. It is platform dependent and in my case I used an iPhone 7 which is a little bit old. So now, let's see the app and its capabilities. The first thing is that the app is free and is on both Apple App Store and Google Play Store. It has a demo mode so you all can try it even though you don't have a Clarius device just to see the settings and how it would look like in real life. As always, bear in mind the stock images they put in the demo may have superb quality and then real life can be kinda deceiving. Just take these images with a grain of salt. Next, let's look at the settings. I'll scroll down slowly so that you can see all the options available. Now I'm gonna start a new exam and here you can enter all the patient information and once we're done we go to the bottom and click scan. So this is the main view and I'm gonna show you the different options of this main screen. On the top we have the scanner name, the preset selected, cardiac in my case but you can see it has other, although not optimized for all of them. The top right bottom is to access Clarius Live and to be able to call other colleagues to show an image or to get help and so on. Then on the center it shows the organ scanned and these two orange indicators are the Clarice logo on top helps position your probe correctly according to the orientation notch and the second one is to indicate that the auto gain is on. You can turn it off and adjust it manually by tapping over it. Then we have the photo or video recording buttons at the bottom right, the freeze button at the bottom center. You can set up the physical buttons of the probe to do these actions as well. And then the image mode selector and some measuring tools that can be helpful in some contexts. And now let's move on to what everyone is waiting for, the images. So now we're going to see the heart of this model. Okay. 
bar sternal long, bar sternal short, low bar sternal short, and high bar sternal short. You can see the aortic valve, which is tricuspid, which is normal. Now the apical four. And here we can see an apical four chamber. And now we're gonna see a subcostal image. And now the inferior vena cava. Perfect. And here we can see an apical four chamber. So you can see here two parasternal lungs from the same patient. Here you can see on the left an apical 4 and on the right the end mode. And now you can see on the left the pulse wave Doppler and on the right how to do a measurement. And as usual, to sum up, let's put the pros and cons all together. So basically the pros are the image quality, the great amount of imaging modes and settings, the lack of annual subscriptions, that it is wireless which can help in disinfection nowadays with COVID-19, the unlimited users and cloud storage, and that it is iOS and Android compatible, plus the 3 years warranty. On the other hand, the main cons are the price, $4,900 for the base model, with $1,000 additional dollars for each premium feature you may want to add, such as pulse weight Doppler, Dicom or Clarius Care, which is an extended coverage and protection, which is more expensive than other competitors. The weight and length of the device, although they reduced them from the V1, and as usual with this device, the overheating with prolonged scan times, more or less similar to other competitors, to be, to be honest. I forgot to mention the separate probes as well. All in all, a very nice device that will have its specific target clients. As you can see on other videos from my channel, all these devices have slight differences that may have more or less importance for each of you, so my advice is that you get to know them all and therefore make the most informed decision on which one is better for your specific requirements. Drop below in the comments other devices you'd like me to review. Finally, keep in mind that you have access to all this information in case you're further interested and want to request a free demo, which I highly recommend in case you're seriously considering to buy this device through their official webpage, which you'll have the link down below in the description. And remember that this video wasn't sponsored and I gave my humble and honest opinion. So that's it, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for all the support you keep giving to these videos. And here you have my socials, which are Masters of Ultrasound in Instagram and Masters of US on Twitter. On to the next one, bye!